Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this webinar on getting the most out of micro drainage. My name is Peter Coombs, and thank you all for joining us. What I plan to do today is going through the various micro drainage bundles that we provide nowadays. These, these are all pre discounted bundles. And we start off with the fundamentals bundle, which will carry out a, a drainage design, whether it be stormwater or, or foul water. And then we'll start going through the steps of improving your productivity, enhancing your competence and, and uh, levels of submission that you can put into local authorities and water companies by going through the, the various bundles. As we go through from the essentials to the advanced to the premium, you'll, you'll see the extra functionality and advantages of using those extra modules that are in the extra bundles. Now, the reason why we're emphasizing this is because we travel around a lot. We're running workshops around the country. And I often find that, uh, as with any software, we're probably not using the full 100% capability of the software. So I thought it's, it's worth just putting this into the context of the latest guidance that's coming through. If you haven't been working in England and Wales, we have lasso guidance that uh, is being driven through. But I know this is very typical of across the region that we're covering. So we need to look at things like identifying where the runoff from the stormwater networks will go. So those runoff destinations. So on the right-hand side here, you can see that we have a range of different requirements on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, I'm identifying the bundle or indeed the extra modules that we've provided to help you to carry out this kind of work. So you could work with the premium bundle or you could even work with the essentials bundle with MD suds to identify the, the runoff destinations. In terms of looking at flood risk outside of the development, similar kind of a story, the premium bundle includes the flood flow, but we can see um, with MD suds this kind of risk to pluvial flooding outside of the development. When it comes to looking at peak flow control, uh, we need to look at all the different storm durations. We, you could do this with the fundamentals, but I'm looking at trying to save you time here. So with the essentials bundle with the APT module, um, we can run all the analyses of all the return periods and all the storm durations in one run. And these are the kind of parts of the demonstration that I'll run through live with you in a second. We also need to look at the volume that's being discharged off the site post-development. So again, we need to use the, the APT module, but the MG SEDS module on its own will enable you to do this kind of pre-development and post-development analysis. So it's maybe worth having a look at that towards the end of the session today. And we're also looking at flood risk, not just outside of the development, but within the development itself. So the same kind of story arises. This kind of work you may have to sub-consult out, but this is the kind of work appropriate technology you can actually do in-house and enhance your own capabilities. Within the lasso guidance, it very clearly runs through the various stages of the planning process. What do we need to provide at the pre-application stage, at outline stage, full planning application stage, and then reserve matters and uh, discharging our rights at the end of the day. And as we go through the requirements of the documents that you need to submit, you can see that the bundles or the add-ons uh, obviously increase to provide you with that capability. So at the very beginning, you may have to do just very simple um, flood risk assessment, may comprise of uh, greenfield discharge rates and runoff volumes and storage estimates, those kind of things. We can do this with the fundamentals bundle, no, no problem at all, using the source control module. But then when you start scoping out the design strategies, um, when we're putting together layout drawings, this is where we need to en enhance the capability and add on things like the MD SEDS module. So with the live demo that I'll run through, um, we've got a, a model that I'll start working with, and the plan is to limit the discharge off of the site to 20 liters per second. Um, I've kept it fairly straightforward. So this is a, a clay soil, so we're just trying to hit one discharge rate, the 20 liters per second, for everything above the one year return period. What I can do is I can work with the Essentials APT module and test that network for all the different storm durations for the 30 year return period. And again, I'll just focus on one return period, trying to sort of build up the story as, as, as I go along. So we can see here that we have a range, a summary of results, and I'll explain the differences in the colors and, and what these things are. We get quite a few questions about that. So, you know, th thanks for those that have submitted the queries. I will kind of cover this when I'm live with the software in a second. And then I'll step on and look at the model, but then ensure that we're making the best use of the, all the available attenuation within the existing network or 
the, the design network, should I say. So what we could do is we can get CASDEF to drop in a flow control part of the way upstream and rather than just capturing everything at the downstream end and putting in one storage structure, one flow control, we could put in a flow control further upstream. We can maximize the attenuation. We can see here there's a, a particular pipe that doesn't look as though it's filling. So what we could do is dropping a flow control here and then make sure there's no flooding upstream, but let's maximize the use of these spare capacities within the network and the manholes for, say, the 30-year return period. That in itself could help reduce the flow going downstream, reduce the peak, and reduce the extra volume of storage that we need to find within the network. And then I'll drop in the flow control at the very downstream end to limit the discharge to 20 liters per second. And then let's use CASDEF to drop in some storage in, in a location where there's flooding, for example. You can really optimize the amount of storage that you're putting below the ground to reduce the amount of cost as well. So this is all contained within the advanced bundle. And I'm going to emphasize this a little bit because I'm fully aware that a lot of people are not fully utilizing the software, particularly in, in terms of the CASDEF module. Um, I'll then take a look at the DrawNet module because within the advanced bundle, um, what we also provide is this graphical interface. And this will enable you to import CAD or GIS drawings into microdrainage. We could even embed within full AutoCAD or Civil 3D and provide this graphical auto design process, which is just so much quicker and easier for you to hit your deadlines. But not only that, um, you could also identify crossings and clashings between stormwater and foul water networks or utilities within the design itself. And then finally, or penultimately, I'll, I'll take a look at the premium bundle, which includes the flood flow module. And the benefit of the, using the flood flow module is to identify those um, outfalls in the first instance, identifying the blue green corridors. I would love for the engineers to be able to bring in the land survey, uh, which we all have for all of our developments, and then deluge it with water, identify the overland blue green corridors, and provide that to the architect who can then work more sympathetically with that overland flood routing that's already in place to better plan out the developments because I know the difficulties in you guys trying to fix the potential flooding issues post-development. And that's something else we have to do uh, more rigorously nowadays, and that's testing the overland flood flow routes when we go way beyond the design. And that's the image shown on the, the right-hand side here. And with the complete bundle, it does incorporate the MD Suds module. You could purchase the MD Suds module if you have the Essentials bundle. It does need the APT module to kind of drive the engine in the background there and to bring in 3D ground model capability. But with the MD Suds, what we're doing better nowadays is modeling the flow of the water through the structures whether that be a pond, as shown in the illustration on the right-hand side, or a swale, or a porous car park area, what we can do is we can add in delay times. Uh, we're using the Muskingum routing method to analyze the flow of the water literally uh, across the pond or then the length of a swale, the filtration of that water through putting in swales with a range of gravels or sands beneath or bioretention areas. We're analyzing that routing going down through the structure uh, providing those lag times, the delays to reduce the peak runoff rates. And as you can see in the illustration here, we can actually build in delay times um, as recommended in the latest uh, Syria manual C753, where we need to delay the flow of the water by something like nine minutes to 18 minutes at uh, the optimum kind of periods of time. And we can also identify the extent of the land take for various um, SUD structures. So on the right hand side here, this diagram is literally showing you the extent of the swale, um, is showing you the extent of the pond, is showing you the extent of the porous paving areas. So we can basically justify our designs to not only the client, but illustrate where those structures will be placed um, physically on the site um, when we're submitting to the local authorities and the water companies. So I'll go live with the software now, and let's take a look at a, a model of what, what I've set up here. So. I mentioned the fact that we have spare capacity within the network. This is often the case. Um, we're not going to fill every single pipe and every single manhole for every single event. Um, I've, I've run an analysis before I set the, um, the webinar up here. And what this is showing you in the long section, within a network, further up towards the upstream end, you can see this is pipe 1002. 
So we're only three pipes down from the very upstream end of a pipe network, um, which if I drag to the right hand side, you can see this is towards the top end of the site. Um, we're only maybe three quarter filling this particular pipe. Further downstream, we can see that we have a red line, which is the, the maximum hydraulic grade line. So even upstream of this particular pipe and downstream of it, we seem to be surcharging in the manholes and getting you know, good, good, good capacity from all of these, but not necessarily this particular pipe. If I wanted to analyze um, all the different storm durations, I'm thinking of the essentials bundle with the APT module. The APT module provides you with these really effective wizards. This is going to save you potentially about a day's work at the end of, a, of the process of designing this drainage strategy. And we have a range of wizards here. If I start off and let's take a look at the seasonal return period wizard, this is basically carrying out a, a hydraulic check on the network that we've designed. So if I click on the seasonal return period wizard, we can see that the wizard itself will check the summer and the winter profile events. If I click on to next, we can select all the storm durations, or in this case, I'm, I've already checked it, to be honest with you, and I know that there's there's definitely nothing beyond the 24 hour event. So just to cut down on run times, this isn't the largest of networks, but um, I'm only running the 50 minute up to the 24 hour, 14, 40 minute storm duration. And if I say next, I'm going to just focus upon the 30 year return period. Um, towards the end, I can show you how we can check for the one year, the 30 year, the 100 year return periods. I can add in for climate change as well. And we can check the greenfield runoff rates against the post development runoff rates as well. That's another wizard that I can show you. If I click on to next, and if I say finish, you can see that it doesn't take too much time. We don't have that many pipes, only a dozen pipes in this particular network, just for your illustration of the um, of the demo, the live demo. The program has run from 50 minute to seven day, uh, to um, 24 hour rather, uh, summer, and 50 minute to 24 hour winter events. You can see each of them here. Now, I wouldn't want to necessarily click on each individual one and check the maximum water level. What we have inbuilt into the APT program is this um, filter so I can click on the top toolbar and the third toolbar down on the on the top of the screen uh, the left hand triangle will then identify what the critical storm is at any location in the network and if you think of the manholes of, as being monitoring stations it's identifying the top water level that's been reached at each manhole for this particular range of uh, events and it happens to be the 15 minute storm duration that's the worst case throughout the network. So it's the shorter duration event when you have no flow controls, no storage structures in the model itself. This is just literally a network of pipes. If I click on the network dropdown, I can click on online controls and show that there's, there, there are no online controls in the network. There are no offline controls and there's, there's nothing in the way of structure. We've just literally got a a network full of manhole pipes and manholes. So it's a 50 minute storm duration that's critical throughout. The question often comes, as I mentioned earlier, um, what, why do we have different colors? Uh, what do the different statuses mean? So if we look at the results that have come back here, uh, we can see wh which pipe number I'm talking about, which manhole location, the monitoring station where the maximum water level has been reached, and the critical event, which happens to be this 15 minute, the cover level of the manhole, and then the top water level reached during this 15 minute storm duration. So we can see that we have either surcharging above the top of the pipe, which would be a positive number, or maybe there's a negative surcharge. So for pipe 1.002, which happened to be the one that I located in the long section, this oversized pipe, the water level is still 312 millimeters below the soffit level of the pipe. For the worst case, so in other words, we're not fully utilizing the attenuation available in that pipe for the 30 year return period. So there's a waste of space there. We're wasting money unless we fully utilize it. If there was flooding above the ground, the program would tell us the flooded volume. And then I'm going to look at the flow, comparing the capacity of the pipe to the flow in the pipe column shown here. When the flow in the pipe is less than 100% of the capacity, so in other words, less than the value of one, pipe number one, for example, is running at 82% of its capacity, then the text is showing blue. 
So everything that's less than one is shown in a blue indicator here. We're either getting an OK status or we're getting a surcharged status. So when it's blue, it means that the flow that's being generated upstream of this particular pipe is less than 100% of the capacity of the pipe. So you, you'd maybe think, well, surely the status should therefore be OK and the flow, 80.1 liters per second for this first pipe, would be within the pipe. Well, it's not actually the case. So there's, there's surcharging in this upstream manhole, but I can tell you that the surcharging isn't due to the capacity of this pipe, it's due to something that's happening downstream. So the pipe downstream of it, 1001, is running above 100% of its capacity. So when the pipe is running above 100% and up to 200% of its capacity, then the text changes from blue to red. So what we're getting is a, a backing up from this kind of throttling in pipe 1002. And that's really useful to know because you could be putting storage in places where you're, you literally are wasting your, your time and wasting your money. So this is helping you to identify where the pinch points are in the network. There is one other color that would show on the screen here, and that would be a whole row highlighted in a very light blue color. And this would be where the flow in the pipe is over 200% of the capacity of the pipe. And that's a real pinch point. Not always the case, but this is probably gonna be where you would start to find that flooding would be taking place. But also it's a, often a good indicator as to where you should be maybe considering adding in storage or additional volume of storage under the ground. Let's have a look at what we can do to improve the system. At the minute, we're discharging 782.4 liters per second uh, off-site because we have no flow control. Before I add in the flow control to limit back to 20 liters per second, don't, don't forget, um, so I'm bound to create a lot of flooding everywhere, potentially, I'm going to see how we can use utilize CASDEF to utilize the existing attenuation within the network. So if I click on site and click on CASDEF parameters, if you, on your systems, click on site and you see that CASDEF parameters are grayed out, you, you, you're obviously not working with the um, advanced bundle or you don't have the CASDEF module or you don't have it switched on. Um, so if you went to the window dropdown and the module selector, this is where you can switch on and, and switch off modules. You can see that all the colored modules are activated. They're all working simultaneously, and that's shown in the bottom left-hand corner of my screen. So this is just a way of, of, of checking whether you've got that switched on or, or not, and take a look at the bottom left-hand corner of your screen to see whether you've, you, you've activated it. Um, so if I click on the site dropdown and the CASDEF parameters, what can we do with CASDEF? Well, we can run uh, and, and fix issues between any storm durations, 15 minutes, I could go up to seven days. But as I say, I've already checked the network. I know that I'm definitely not going beyond the, the 24 hour storm duration. So it's going to cut down the run times a little bit for me, speed wise. And we could get CASDEF to add in a flow control anywhere in the network to maximize the upstream attenuation. But we can tell CASDEF what the minimum orifice diameter should be. So talk to the water company, talk to the local authority, what are they happy with? Is it 100 millimeters? Is it 150 millimeter opening sizes? I'm just gonna put in 150 millimeters in the window there. When we're dropping in the flow control, what kind of factor of safety do you want to work with? How far below the ground do you want the water to reach? So I'm gonna put in a free board factor of 0.5 below the cover level. So drop in the flow control, maximize the attenuation upstream, and limit the height of the water or depth of the water to no closer than half a meter of the cover level for me. You can also use CASDEF to add in online storage structures. And we can add those in as ponds, or we could also use CASDEF to upsize pipes. And we can tell the program what pipe size increment you should step up in. So there's a range of different things you can utilize CASDEF to do for you. Either increase the size of the pipe, or if you have flooding at a location, just drop in online storage at a location as a, a pond. So having set up the parameters, I can now, for this particular network, set up the CASDEF controller. And the first thing I want to do is drop in a flow control, so modify a control. So as I say, you could get the program to modify 
pipe sizes. If we had flooding in locations to upsize the pipes, we could tell the program what the max pipe diameter is we want to use in any one location. Uh, we can get the program to add in storage. I'll do that in, in a second. But having set up my modifier control at the upstream end of pipe 1003, so downstream of that bigger pipe that's not being fully utilized, it's going to be manhole number six. So I want to drop the flow control in, say OK. And there we can click on another wizard option, which is the CASDEF and summary wizard. So if I click on that, similar story, we step through the the, the various stages here. So the program will check summer and winter profile events for the 30-year return period. You could use a different return period, 100 year if that's a requirement by a local authority. You can select all the storm durations or we could go for the default storm durations and then click on those intermediate storms to take it from 50 minute up to 24 hours. That's my intention. Step onto the next stage and then say finish. So you can see there's the flicking of the simulation. So what's the program they're doing? It's taking a look at our site, it's dropping in a flow control and seeing if it's going to restrict the discharge and not create flooding but maximize the attenuation upstream of that location in manhole number six. It's going through a number of iterations here. If I hit save we can see what the audit trail is. And, and the first thing to, to notice, if I, if I click on the critical by storm duration, you'll see that the peak discharge off-site has reduced. It's still you know, way into the 700, 762.8 liters per second. And it's still the 15 minute storm duration that's critical. But we have actually had the program drop in a flow control. And if I take a look at the results, we can see what it has actually done. I can look at the CASDEF audit trail but maximize this screen um, it's taken all those iterations i was saying it's flicking backwards and forwards it's gone through a total of 15 different passes look 15 different iterations it's just summarizing the last kind of three steps for us so it was trying 463 millimeter opening orifice size which worked but it didn't maximize the attenuation so then it tried a 353 that worked but it didn't maximize the attenuation so it's ended up dropping in a flow control which is an orifice of 297 millimeter opening size. We could put in the equivalent hydro break in there, um, but let's have a look at um, the other results. You can also see the CASDEF alterations that have been made, and you can see it's added in the control and it's sized the control at manhole number six for me. What does that look like in the model itself? If I click on the network drop down, uh, remember when I looked at the online controls before, there was nothing in place. There's the 297 millimeter opening size orifice that's been dropped into that location for us. So if I take a look at the long section again now, bearing in mind that the critical storm duration is the 15 minute winter event, you can see that the red line now uh, is, is now coincident with the soffit level of the pipe. So the two yellow lines are invert level of pipe, soffit level of pipe. The red line is a maximum hydraulic grade line. And remember, initially we had um, surcharging upstream of, the, of this oversized kind of pipe, and there was surcharging downstream, but we were only about three quarters full. And if I just click on the tracer button and hit the video play, you can now see that we're fully utilizing this particular pipe for the 30 year storm duration. So that's kind of nice to know. Next step, let's go on to the plan view. For those of you that do not have the essentials, or you're just working with the fundamentals bundle, uh, what we would do here is uh, add in a flow control upstream of the outfall. So we're just going to drag and drop a flow control onto manhole number S13. So I'll click on the little toolbox. So this is really the, the fundamentals bundle. And click on online controls. And you can see we have a range of different flow controls that we can drag and drop onto our model. I'm just going to drag and drop the hydro brake. If I take a look at the manhole before I do that, so I'm left clicking on the manhole, right click, take a look at the properties of the manhole. I'm really interested in how deep it is. So with CASDEF, I was saying I want to leave this kind of free board of a half a meter. I don't want the water level to reach within, say, half a meter of the ground level. And so if I took the 463 millimeters away from that, so let me say that we've got 463 mil of freeboard at this downstream end, it's helping me to identify what the design head 
acting on the flow control will be. In other words, I'm going to put in a structure that will be, say, two meters deep. There will be two meter design head acting on the flow control. This is the logic of my thought process. So let me drag and drop the hydro brake. A third row, a third column along, second row down. Drag and drop the hydro brake onto the manhole. I can then populate the design head two meter and the design flow. Um, remember, I want to restrict the discharge to 20 liters per second off-site at the end of the day, and we're running at over 700 liters per second. I want to minimize the upstream storage, so I want to use the most efficient optimum hydro brake that's available, and I'll click on the calculate diameter. It'll pop up with a little window, and I, I'll have various choices. I just want to see the window because I want to identify what the size of the opening of the hydro brake will be. And it, it'll be 184 millimeters. I know that that would be adopted by a water company. So I'll say OK to that. I'll say OK to the flow control. So we now have two flow controls, one a little bit upstream. I close the toolbox. So on the plan view, we can see that we have two little pink dots. So a pink dot will mean there's an online control. Here's the one with the orifice on manhole number six. And then here's the hydro brake at manhole number 13. Now, if I just hit green for go and analyze what is in the simulation criteria, the site simulation criteria, um, it's a 30-minute storm duration. Let me set it to the 15-minute winter profile event. If you're working with the fundamentals bundle, you would have to now check every single separate storm duration. So I'm just setting it to what I know was the worst case. And if I hit green for go, I wouldn't be 100% sure that this is actually the worst case, so I would use the, the APT wizard. And sure enough, by dropping in the flow control, we've now got flooding occurring in three different places, and there is more than two meters head acting upon my flow control, so I've got more than 20 liters per second being discharged off the site. So what I could do, I may have to add in additional storage in, in different places, but let me just get CASDEF to drop in on the downstream manhole the extra storage re required to alleviate the flooding, at least at the downstream end. So I'm going to do that on manhole number 13 and get CASDEF to drop in online storage at manhole number 13, and let's see if that fixes the flooding back upstream, because this is happening due to um, a flow control midpoint plus the effect of what's happening at the downstream condition. So I'll go back to my network dropdown. I'll click on the CASDEF controller. We've already added in the flow control, so I don't need to run that analysis again. Um, I don't want to modify the pipe size. I just want CASDEF to add storage as a pond at the downstream end of the network. And I need to specify what the depth of that water needs to be, or I can level uh, specify a level that the water does not need to exceed. And that's 98.037. So you can physically tell the program that level to uh, hit. So let's say OK to that. And once again, I can go to the wizards, and I can click on CASDEF and Summary Wizard. And I'm going to run for the 30-year return period again from 50 minutes up to 24 hour, and then I can hit finish. And let's let's see what kind of volume of storage we need to um, alleviate that flooding at the downstream end at manhole number 13. If you're not using the CASDEF module, we would go through a methodical approach, calculate a quick storage estimate, identify what that volume needs to be. I'll just hit save here. Identify what the volume needs to be under the ground for the 30-year return period based on the impervious area, uh, and then we would put in the, the volumes around the network accordingly. This just enables you to optimize your network precisely where you want to add in the storage structures. So I'm now clicking on the critical storm, and you can see that the criticalities have changed a little bit. We're now running two different events that, that, that are critical for the 30 year. Um, 15 minute, sure enough, at the upstream end, but now there's an effect of having storage being applied online at the downstream end at manhole number 13. I mean, the good news is it has fixed the flooding. Should we find that there was, was flooding elsewhere, then I could use CASDEF to fix the flooding at the upstream end if I wanted to, but I'm just trying to go through like a logical thought process with you. And we've hit the 20 liters per second discharge rate. So the question is, what did the program do? If I look at the results, and again, 
interrogate the CASDEF audit trail. I'm just scrolling down through. Um, it's run through a number of iterations and it's added in a volume of storage of, of 1,256 cubic meters. That's the net impact of what the program has done for us. And that's alleviated the flooding across the whole network. So that's really starting to introduce you to the power of what you can do with CASDEF. Now, we're running a series of workshops around the country. You don't have to work within the network itself. You could do the same kind of exercise, but within source control. So if you're sizing up a soakaway or a pond or an oversized pipe, we can use CASDEF there too to automatically size up the structures for you. And if you created the cascade of structures, provided you set the water level within each structure, uh, then you could get CASDEF to fix within the SEDS treatment train. Uh, and we're showing you how to do that on the workshops. If you're in the Leeds area up in the Northeast, we're there on Thursday this week. So go on online and uh, book a place and come along and see us there. We'll show you that with, with source control. So this is really giving you a good insight into certainly the essentials module with the APT, but creeping on to looking at the advanced bundle with the CASDEF and I'll shortly show you the advantages of the Drawnet module as well. Before I do that, I just want to finish up with the essentials because there are a number of different wizards and a range of things that we provide with the advanced productivity tools. It's not just the wizards. With APT, the advanced productivity tools, you also have the ability to import um, 3D ground models. So I can go to the site dropdown, look at GIS data. You see at the minute there's no information here, but I could import GIS data in terms of uh, ground model details, LIDAR data, CSVs, TXT, XML, if you're working with um, MX or if you're working with Civil 3D or any other kind of third-party software, we can import those ground models. So you can import three-dimensional ground data with APT. We can also add in design flows within the network to reduce the size of the pipes downstream as we are designing with APT. Um, we can run the wizards, and you can model existing drainage systems as well. So even if you had a backfall on a pipe, maybe a water company would say, look at the impact of your new development upon our existing network. And by the way, we've got a half a dozen pipes here, and they've got backfalls on them. You could model that with APT as well. But there are a range of other wizards that we could utilize. The one that you would use to satisfy the local authorities would be the discharge wizard. It is going to run the hydraulic checks for us. Um, as, as I ran before with the seasonal return period wizard. But this time, checking summer and winter profiles, if I click on the defaults and those intermediate storms to make sure I'm not putting any gaps in there, you can run the one year, the 30 year, the 100 year return period. We can add in 20%, 30%, 40% or whatever for climate change impacts. Check with your local authority as to what their target is. Typically, it's coming up to more like the 40% mark nowadays. And then you can add in what the discharge rate should be post-development compared to the pre-development. So this is where we can set a target up of 20 liters per second, maximum discharge rate for like all events if we, if we wanted to. We can also get the program to calculate the greenfield discharge volume, or if it's a brownfield site, the brownfield discharge volume. I think this site is about 5.9 hectares and we have an annual average rainfall of about 700 millimeters and a standard percentage runoff of 47 percent. So if I hit calculate, the program is calculating the greenfield runoff volume for you. So if I say okay to that, it will use the six-hour 100-year event to run the analysis for us and tell us whether we're passing or failing. If I go to next and finish, it will come back and tell us whether we are hitting those pre-development greenfield discharge rates and volume targets. We're in clay soil, so I'm at least expecting to fail the volume because we are making a clay soil even more impervious with 100% um, impervious surfaces like roofs and roads, et cetera, et cetera. So if I hit save, you can see that the discharge rates yeah, we're looking okay for the one-year return period. We're actually hitting 20 liters per second post-development for the one year and the 30 year. But when we come to the 100 year with climate change, once more the water's come up and it's flooding above the ground because we've gone way beyond our 30 year design. So we have more than two meters head acting on the flow control. 
So we're, we're going over the 20 liters per second. We're at 22.6. So we can fix that. I'd put in a, an offline control and then I'd take that above the 30 year event off to one side as an offline storage structure and store that on the surface. That'd be the most cost effective way of going. And sure enough, the, the volume of discharge post development is going to be greater than the greenfield discharge volume. So that's really telling me that I'm going to be restricted to this Q bar one target figure. Don't worry, I'm not going to fix everything right now because I want to just move on and show you the additional um, modules and the rest of the advanced bundle for you. If we're working with the advanced bundle, not only do you get the CASDEF functionality, which effectively comes kind of free with the bundle uh, because the bundles are pre-discounted, but you also get the drawnet option. And what the drawnet option will do is provide you with that ability to import CAD drawings. So here you can see that I can load in CAD files in terms of imagery. I can load in GIS shape files as imagery of, of our sites. And this will enable you to work even quicker and easier. So if I started a project from scratch, I could import my CAD drawing. I could go to the site dropdown. I could import a ground model. And here we have ground information. So this has been designed using something like XP Site 3D, our road design package. So you have all the XYZ coordinates of the ground model, including the highway. It's the most accurate way of, of working. And then what I could do on the plan view, I can use a little toolbox. And with that little toolbox, I can define straight pipes. And having set up the design criteria, I then just click merrily away along the highway and the program's automatically designing not just the stormwater, but the foul water drainage networks. And then what I can do when I've designed the networks using DrawNet, I can go to the site dropdown and then I can set up a crossings and conflicts filter. So if I do that, we can then check whether we have any conflicts. And that doesn't have to be just between drainage networks. It could be um, a conflict with a proposed utility, a large gas main, a large, large water main, or maybe some existing utilities. Um, if you have that information in a CAD format, by the way, you can import the information as a quality level like QL, quality level A, QLB, QLC, QLD as a polyline. And then based on these levels of confidence, you know, how close, if it's quality level A, how accurate is that polyline? Is it plus or minus? 250 mil on the vertical and on the horizontal basis, or even better, you could adjust these and make them even more accurate. 100 mil plus or minus 100 mil, for example. And then when you're designing your stormwater networks, if you're within 250 mil of a QLA utility, then there'll be cross hatching to say, be careful, your confidence is not that great, and you could end up with a crossing or a clash at that location. So having set up the filter here, we can then run an analysis using the crossings and conflicts. And here's a matrix that's been produced. I haven't done anything previous to the, the webinar here. I've just literally clicked on this. And there you can see that we have some aspects between the FAL network. This is the name of the network that I've given here, FAL main network and the flow through structure sets network. And we can see that we've got horizontal separations. Vertically, we're okay. There are no clashes at all. Horizontal separations, we're actually okay. It's all in blue. If we were within our confidence levels, it would be showing up in red and identifying this. It's just giving you a little bit of a heads up. So we're good in terms of what we've designed here right now. We're not going to have a crossing or a conflict. So the other wizard that I would use to satisfy the water companies, for example, would be the design audit wizard. So if I look at the design audit wizard, here we're looking at sizes of manholes, the manhole head loss that's associated with each manhole location, whether there's enough storage in place, if there's a minimum pipe size that the lo local authority or the water authority are prepared to adopt, a maximum distance between manholes, and the accuracy of the coordinates compared to the length of pipe uh, within the model, the depth of cover, and also the aspect of backdrops, whether we're having issues with any backdrops being out of range, and the full bore velocities. And if I click on next, we can go through the steps, check all the storm durations, and we can check for surcharging for different return periods. We can check for flooding for the 30-year return period. If we're looking at 
proportional velocity within a pipe? Do we want to specify a minimum proportional velocity for a particular return period where we've got online attenuation with those oversized pipes? Are they going to silt up? That's the kind of question that I'm asking here. And any other additional return periods? We can run the analysis and get a complete audit coming back, ready for submission for sewers for adoption. So I'm not going to have time to run that now. It's just gone quarter to one. So I'll, I'll cancel on that. But if you need me to show you a demonstration live, then feel free to drop me a, a line at um, UK Education at xpsolutions.com and we can, we can show you this live. So that's covering the advanced bundle uh, with the draw net and the CASDEF functionality. What you're seeing here now in three dimensions is also overland flood flow routing, where I've gone beyond the design for this 100 year plus climate change event. And now I'm showing overland flood flow routing post development as required by the latest lasso guidance. So I'm just hitting the video play button here. And we can see that we have water flooding out of manholes running across the terrain, maybe re-entering the underground drainage network. So when the water flows up to the next manhole, it's allowed to flow in at a controlled rate back into the underground network if there is capacity under the ground. And you can see that when we get the uh, end of the run, get to the end of the run, that we have a range of different colors. So the color of the water is telling me the maximum depth water has um, risen to. So blue is the shallower water, um, red, yellow, and white, it gets increasingly deep. So when we're getting up to the properties here, if I just zoom in a little bit, you can see that the water is starting to back up and uh, flood against the properties. Uh, if I click on the view options, I can add on GIS features, which are the properties themselves. So I've added those into the model using the draw net function, which is in the advanced bundle. So now when we're running the analysis, I can tilt this up. We can see the drainage network. I've got a range of underground storage structures in place as well. Just running the analysis, you'll see the water starting to flow through the pipes, filling the structures, flooding above the ground, across the topography, and then flowing in between and up against the properties. So this is the flood flow, and this is within the premium bundle. So we've moved on from the advanced bundle to the premium bundle. And this is the advantage of utilizing the flood flow module. It's giving you a dynamic overland flood flow routing. And you can see it's interesting because the water here is kind of channeling down the side of the road. And we have the CAD drawing draped over the top of the terrain. If I take off the CAD drawing and just show you um, the wireframe underneath and what that model comprises of, if I show you the, the triangulated model, you can see that you have the camber on the road being identified with a, a higher density of triangles. And that's that's just been read in through that site drop down GIS data. So we've got a really accurate model to the millimeter of the, the channel levels, et cetera, the crown of the road. And there we've run the analysis of the flooding over that, identifying the depth, the direction, and the velocity of the overland flow. I'd like people to identify the overland flood flow routes before we even start developing the site, as I mentioned at the very beginning. And to do that, you can either add the MD SUDS module to your essentials and above bundle or, or get the complete bundle. And if we look at MD SUDS, the big difference with MD SUDS is totally a graphical interface. So here we can right click and we can bring in ground information. We can right click on CAD information. So I've overlaid this CAD drawing upon a 3D ground model. And then what I can do is I can use the design tools here to then deluge and just identify where the water is wanting to flow before I even start scoping out and designing the drainage network. So if I click on the deluge option here, we'll get the program to split this model into four meter by four meter grid squares. And what it'll do, it'll take a look at what's in the window here and analyze the overland flood routing just by applying a starting depth of water. In this case, it's just saying 50 mil. I'm happy to leave it at, at 50 millimeters depth of water across the whole terrain and just see where that runs in a 60 minute time period. So if I just click on analyze or say okay you can now see the water is flowing from the west across to the east and again the the blue is the light is the shallower water red is deeper so the water is flowing from west across to the east so ideally before the architect has produced the layout drawing if the engineers could do that if i, if I switch off the um, off the cad data if you just had the ground model 
and deluged and then provided that to the architect, they would then hopefully work with, with more sympathy in terms of the overland flood flow routing to make life easier for yourselves at a later date. But if I add the CAD data back on again, if I switch off the deluging, what are the other benefits of working with MD suds? Well, we can add in drainage systems on the CAD drawing. And these, these are drainage systems that I've defined. I have up here a swale, for example. If I double click on the swale, I've defined the swale literally upon the CAD drawing. So you've got the extent, the land take being taken up by this particular structure. And you can see that information here. And when we run the analysis, we're analyzing the flow of the water along the swale. I've added in the advanced functionality of delaying the water within the swale by nine minutes, 540 seconds, as recommended in the, the latest Syria guidance that I men mentioned earlier on. So it's analyzing the flow of that water along and then down and through the structure. This is benefiting because it's providing in a true lag time. It's then reducing the peak runoff. And that reduction in peak runoff at each location of a structure could indeed help to re reduce the volume of storage that we need to find elsewhere because it's just delaying that flow, slowing down the flow and analyzing the flow of the water through the structure. So that's one of the major benefits of uh, MD suds, um, as well as identifying the extent of where the structures are seated and then analyzing the deluging pre-development as well. So looking at that flood risk that the Local authorities are obviously so keen to identify both in terms of flood risk within the development and flood risk outside of the development and the outfall locations for the stormwater networks as well. So we'll just return back to the presentation. In summary, I hope that's provided a, a slightly clearer illustration of how these microdrainage bundles reflect not just the development, but how it can help you to work more quickly, more accurately, more productively. The Essentials Bundle over and above that Fundamentals will provide you with the APT module. The benefit of that, we call it Advanced Productivity Tools, no coincidence there. It will save you typically about a day's work at the end of the process due to utilizing those all time-consuming uh, analyses and simulations. It'll identify the critical storm duration at each location within the network, and then you can print that out and submit to the local authority and the, and the water companies. It also enables you to import three-dimensional data. So we have terrain, accurate terrain models to work from. You can model existing drainage networks, um, if that's a requirement. And you can also set those design flows. You can restrict the flow even when you're designing the pipe network to optimize the downstream pipes whilst you're designing. The next step up, the advanced bundle incorporates, essentially incorporates the CASDEF module for free because these bundles are pre-discounted as well as the drawnet module. So CASDEF will fix any problems identified by the wizards within APT. So if you have flooding or if you want to maximize the full potential of the attenuation available within the network, as I've showed you, you can get the program to drop in a flow control and maximize that attenuation to make sure you're fully utilizing the available storage under the ground without adding in additional volumes left, right, and center. So you're value engineering on behalf of your clients, but providing a technically competent result to submit to the, the approving authorities. It will help you to auto-optimize the size of your structures. You can do this in either the simulation network uh, mode or within source control itself. And as I say, I'd love to meet you guys if you can come along to any of the workshops that are coming up in the near future. As well as the DrawNet module, which provides you with that graphical design capability, either within micro drainage itself or within full AutoCAD and Civil 3D. Uh, we can also take a look at the crossings and the clashes. This is a nightmare for the contractors on site and a massive waste of time and a distraction when we're trying to weave our way, thread the eye of a needle through all the myriad of utilities under the ground. We can hopefully do a lot of work to avoid those problems uh, at design stage. Moving on to the premium and moving beyond the design, we then can use flood flow to not just identify the blue-green corridors at the outset, but also model the overland flood flow routes beyond the design. So this will help us to manage the surface water and look at those climatic um, conditions that go way beyond the design, look at climate change, 
and create evidence to show that we are controlling that overland flood flow routing and making sure that we're not flooding properties and we're not flooding the neighbors. We're containing the flooding within the confines of the site. This is the requirement of the latest uh, LASSO guidance and that contained within the, the latest SETS manual is good working practice as well. And finally, the complete module, which includes MD SEDs. MD SED, which could be added to an essentials bundle and above, by the way, but we can model that flow of the water through the structures, incorporate those lag times, help hopefully to reduce the peak runoff rates and reduce the volumes of storage that you need to find. We can identify blue-green corridors with MD SEDs, and you can also illustrate the land take, the actual take up of each of these individual SED structures that you're utilizing in, in a CAD format. So I hope that was interesting and that you can now appreciate what we can provide you with. All the bundles, as I mentioned, are pre-discounted. So ideally, that's the best time to kind of purchase these. You can always add the modules on at a later date. Feel free to drop us a line or call in and speak to the sales team and we'll be more than happy to help with any queries at all, provide non-obligatory quotations, etc. And how the packages will help you to increase your capabilities and increase your productivity. We also run regular training, so if you need uh, any help with that, feel free to take a look on the website and we're here to help. So looking at the next month and what's coming up, in the next week actually, uh, we'll be coming up to Leeds, Max is there the next couple of days actually, training on Tuesday and Wednesday, and then the team will be up there, myself, Ludmilla, and Max uh, will be running a, a workshop, and that will be on Thursday, the 27th of April. So if you haven't already booked to come along, they're morning workshops, they're complimentary. We are running them around the country. Um, so the next one after uh, the Leeds workshop will be in Bristol on the 16th of May. So uh, do take a look on the website and take a look at the location. Um, the training that's coming up shortly in the early part of May, we have three days of XP swim training. Um, so this is the, the modeling um, software that we, we have. Where we're modeling existing flooding situations and utilizing existing GIS data, existing drainage networks, etc. We typically use XP swim. Uh, so we have three days of training on XP swim between the 3rd and the 5th of May. And there is a webinar that Ludi will be running, and then she'll be running a, a webinar for us on the 10th of May. Then the workshop in Bristol will be coming up on the 16th of May. And then finally, we, we have at the end of May, four days of micro drainage training. Courses A and B fill up really quite quickly. So these are the design fundamentals, design installments, file water networks uh, in course A, adding in the storage structures and mitigating against flooding and doing a little bit of modeling with flow controls is course B. Um, course C is where we look at the slightly more advanced modeling and the graphical design. So this is utilized in DrawNet. So if you do have the advanced bundle, then course C is the one for yourselves. And course D is the training course for the MD SEDS module. So this is the complete bundle or the MD SEDS module if you've uh, recently purchased this. So I hope to see you very shortly at one of those events. Uh, you'll be more than welcome. And look forward to seeing you again at the next webinar on the 10th of May with Lude Miller. Have a great day. Bye for now.